موت رحمة للعالمين النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد اليوم الثاني من شهر صفر ألف وأربعمائة وخمسة وستة وأربعون الموافق لستة من شهر أغسطس ألفان وأربعة وعشرون نواصل درسنا في هذا الكتاب المبارك رياض الصالحين أسر الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يبارك فينا وفيما نتعلمه وأن يغفر لنا زلات ويغفر للمؤلف ويرفع درجته في العليين So بإذن الله عز وجل we continue from where we stopped last uh, درس and in the previous uh, درس if I'm not uh, wrong we uh, talk about the first two ayat mentioned by Imam al-Nawawi and the kitab al-libas bab istihbab al-thawb al-abyad wa jawaz al-ahmad wal-akhdar ila akhir so today inshallah we move on to the first hadith which is the hadith of Abdullah ibn Abbas anna rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala ilbasu min thiyabikum al-bayad fa innaha min khayri thiyabikum wa kaffinu fiha mawtakum rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said when you choose what to wear, you should choose the white one. He said, wear the white cloth. He says, فَإِنَّهَا مِنْ خَيْرِ ثِيَابِكُمْ Because it is one of the best uh, clothes you have. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with this kind of uh, setter. Amongst the, the setter and the libas given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the best is the white one. The hadith says, the Prophet said, min It is one of the best amongst your cloth. And this is not restricted to the living ones. The hukum includes the dead ones also. Rasulullah said, And also use the white cloth to bury or to cover those who die among you. And also the kafan of the mayyid should be the abyad. So just like the living ones, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also want us to use it when we are uh, clothing a dead uh, person. And that shows respect, although we don't do what we do with the living ones because they deserve you know, to receive uh, things that are having quality. That's why when they uh, um, uh, they talked to Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr, he had his own uh, kafan, a very normal, you know, uh, a cloth and fabric and sheep. So Abu Bakr was wanting them to use this when they bury him, and they wanted to use a good and expensive one. He said, "This one is for the living ones, you know, because uh, when you put a very expensive one, it's going to be." you know, part of the food of those insects on the earth. Because even if the, uh, the, 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 the soil, you know, doesn't have the ability to consume the flesh of the person who is inside the grave, we're not told that this is also applicable on, on, the, on the fabric which we use when we bury him. So most likely that one will be, will be eaten by by the in insects and the worms under under the earth, so it is better to keep the expensive one and the quality one to the living ones. And the dead ones, we use the abyab, and I guess this is a practice in every place wherever you go. People the, uh, buy kafan which is white and cover the dead people with it. So, Alhamdulillah, this is the sunnah, and people, or at least the vast majority of the people, are doing the sunnah of. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in clothing the living and the dead people. قال وعن سمورة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم البسوا البياض فإنها أطهر وأطيب وكفنوا فيها موتاكم. رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم said wear the white ones the cloth فإنها أطهر وأطيب because they are the cleanest and the best. And when somebody dies amongst you, use the white uh, fabric to clothe, to cover him. 
to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You know, um, he added, you know, some virtues and explanation of the reason why he is choosing the white for us when we are alive and when we die. He said, it it is more pure, wa'atiyab, and also cleaner and fresher." He says, "Wa fiha and also bury the dead ones using the white cloth. رضي الله عنه قال كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم مربوعا ولقد رأيته ولقد رأيته فيه حلة حمراء ما رأيت شيئا أحسن منه البراء ابن عازب البراء كان يصف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم he was describing the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he says كان مربوعا ربعت ربعت من ال ال الرجال. This is the person who is between tall. This is not tall and not short, moderate uh, height. So he said, "This is the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم." ولقد رأيته. And I saw the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. I saw him one day. في حلة حمراء. He was. He adorns himself with a libas, a cloth that is hamra. Hamra means uh, red color. Ma ra'aytu shay'an qattu ahsana mihu. He said, I have never seen something ever, you know, that is more beautiful than the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Never saw something that is more handsome than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So this shows that this type of cloth is halal to be worn. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a person that usually, you know, uh, I mean, always, always, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is, is neat, clean, clean himself. You know, naturally the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is like that. But he added to that that the cloth he's wearing is also clean and neat. And he uh, wear things which will uh, present him in the best uh, way to the, to the people. That's why... Uh, he doesn't like to see a person who receives the blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but at the same time, he is stingy to uh, or against himself. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa wear this type of uh, cloth, which shows that it is sunnah for a person to be neat and not to wear something, you know, uh, ugly, you know, while Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed him with, with a ni'mah. So that's Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And also concerning this hullat uh, al whether it is permissible for a male to wear completely on absolute red cloth or is not, you know, is a matter of controversy among the scholars. Majority of the scholars believe that it is disliked, less dislikeness to be attributed to wearing the red cloth uh, for the, the male. But here, if you see, it is mentioned that the Prophet Sallallahu used this. That's the reason why some scholars said collective, you know, uh, the nature of the nusus, you know, shows that this is not completely red. There are khutut, you know, at the side of the clothes, there are some other lines which are not red. You know, that, you know sometimes they make clothes like that, you know, the, the khutut at the, uh, some lines which are uh, be, been placed with the other, other colors. <laughs> so they said it's not completely red. There are some other colors, you know, uh, on that uh, cloth, and this is okay when you have other Colored being mixed with such a such a libas. So whatever the case might be, a Muslim should stay away from it. It's better for him for him if it is completely red for the for the brothers. ibn Abdullah anhu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Min Adami. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, Abu Juhayfa says, I saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Mecca, in the place which is called Al-Abtah. You know, and they made a tent, you know, from uh, leather or skin of an animal. They made it for him. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, was there inside that uh, uh, Qubba. فخرج بلال بوضوئه فمن ناضح ونائل فخرج النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم 
فخرج نبي صلى الله عليه وسلم علي حلة حمراء كأني أنظر إلى بياض ساقيه فتوضأ وأذن بلال فجعلت أتتبأ فاه ها هنا وها هنا يقول يمينا وشمالا حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاة ثم ركزت له عنزة فتقدم فصلى يمر بين يديه الكلب والحمار ولا يمنع Abu Jahifa said, I saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this place, in that tent, which was a place for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made wudu. And the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, everyone is trying to get whatever he can get from the balance of that uh, water. Bilal went out. فَخَرَجَ بِلَالٌ فَجَعَلْتُ أَتَتَبَّعُ فَهُ وَأَذَّنْ You know, Bilal made adhan. قَالَ فَجَعَلْتُ أَتَتَبَّعُ فَاهُ So I saw, I was watching Bilal making the adhan. So I kept on watching his mouth to see the way he is making the adhan and what is he going to be saying. يَقُولُ يَمِينًا وَشِمَالًا And he is facing the right and the left. حَيَّ عَلَى الصَّلَاةِ And he is saying حَيَّ عَلَى الصَّلَاةِ Meaning, when he was making the adhan, when he reaches the place where حَيَّ عَلَى الصَّلَاةِ should be said, he will look at his right side. Scholar said, Hayy al-Salah completely should be on the right. And Hayy al-Falah completely should be on, on the left, uh, like that. So he said, I saw Bilal looking, uh, facing right and the left, saying Hayy al-Salah, Hayy al-Falah. قال ثم ركزت له الأنزة. And then uh, uh, they fixed the Anaza. Anaza should be read Anaza, not Anza. If you read it Anza, then it will be a goat. But the anaza is a stick, small stick the Prophet ﷺ used to hold. So the way to pronounce it is anaza, not anza. You, know, you have to be very careful because if you read to somebody who speaks Arabic and you tell him, Ruki said, Lahu anza, he will not understand why the goat being uh, fixed uh, uh, on the ground uh, for the Prophet. ﷺ. So they fixed the, 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 the stick for the Prophet ﷺ as a sutra. فتقدم فصلى. يمر بين يديك الكلب والحمار ولا يمنع. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم moved forward and he prayed. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he moved forward and he prayed. So you see there was a sutra, right? Uh, uh, there was a sutra being placed to, uh, uh, for the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم moved forward and and prayed. يمر بين يديك الكلب والحمار and goat and uh, himar donkey. They pass in front of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and that nobody is stopping them from from that. So this is one of the evidences which uh, some scholars might be using, you know, to support their opinion that la yakta salat shay. You know, it's a controversial matter among the scholars whether you know something has the ability to break your prayer when you pray if you don't have sutra and some something cross in front of you, or uh, whether you have sutra or you don't have sutra, if something crosses in front of you, whether your prayer is gone or not. You know that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, يَقْطَعُ صَلَاةَ أَحَدَكُمْ إِذَا لَمْ يَكُنْ بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ شَيْءٌ يَسْتُرُهُ الْمَرْأَةُ أَوْ الْحَائِدْ وَالْكَلْبْ الْأَسْوَدْ وَالْحِمَارُ الْمَرْأَةُ أَوْ الْحَائِدْ وَالْكَلْبْ الْأَسْوَدْ وَالْحِمَارُ And then they said, Ya Rasulullah, مَا بَالُ الْأَسْوَدِ وَالْأَحْمَرُ What is because he says the prayer of one of you will be will be invalid, will be invalidated if he doesn't have something to cover him. When he prays, he doesn't put sutra in front of him. He says if one of these uh, three uh, creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pass in front of him, the prayer will be gone. <coughs> the first one he says, Al-Mar'atu or Al-Haid. Al-Haid means the matured uh, woman. That's uh, the reason why the Zahiri Madhab is wrong. When they said, even a baby, you know, girl, when somebody passed with her in front of a person who is praying, the prayer is, is gone. And this opinion is, is wrong, you know, because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi used the word al hai He said al hai The hai means the person who reaches the age of maturity amongst uh, the sisters. So he says al hai wal himar and the donkey, wal kalbul aswad and the black dog, the companions of the Prophet said, Ya Rasulullah, what? Why black dog? Why is it different from the red 
and other and other colors. The Prophet said, in the Aswad Shaitan, because the black one is, is Shaitan. So the illa be mentioned by the Prophet is, is Shaitan. You know, that this type of dog is, is Shaitan. That's the reason why when it cross in front of you, then your prayer is, is God. That's why Sheikh Lassam Mutemiya said in his book, Qawaii Nuraniya, if you are sure that the thing that passes in front of you is Shaitan, your prayer is gone. Because the Prophet ﷺ, when he was asked about the black dog, what is that? He said, it, it, is, it is Shaitan. The Prophet ﷺ said, the black dog is, is Shaitan. So we got from this that the illa in the prohibition is Shaitan. So anything that has this description, then it is also uh, breaking uh, the prayer. So, you know, as I said, this is a controversial matter, you know, and Islam by the liberalists also, they will never relax. They talk, 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 talk. You know, in the past, things are going in a nice way. Nobody takes these uh, matters as something which shows disrespect to anyone. But we're living in a time people, you know, believe and they think that they have the capacity to talk against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to criticize Rabbul Alameen. And to criticize Rabbul Alameen, billah. That is not disrespect. This is the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is a wisdom behind this. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, uh, said uh, I'm sorry, when the Prophet Allah Suma said that. So we believe in it. Whatever is authentic, you know, from Rasulullah Suma, we believe in it. And subhanAllah, in the past, no brother, no sister was having an issue with this. They just read and pass and that's it. This is the Sharia of Allah. You know, Allah says I want it in this way. What is my business, your business, their business for us to come and say, no, it is not supposed to be in this way. You Allah, your Islam cannot be completed. Your Iman cannot be accepted unless if you submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, what is the meaning of Aman to Billah? Wa aslam to Lillah. When somebody says, I believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I submitted to Allah. But then tomorrow, he's going to tell you, no, no, this one doesn't make sense. I mean, you say to what I said, it doesn't make sense. You say to what he said, Karim said, Bashir said, it doesn't make sense. But you cannot say this to what Rasulullah said. What sense are we talking about? You Allah, the person who says that what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says does not make sense, this person is majnoon. Sadduquni, trust me, this person is 100% majnoon. Because Janoon, insanity, has different types. You get an idea? His type of Janoon is that. You look at what Allah SWT says, you say it doesn't make sense. You want to accept it, accept it. You don't want to accept it, don't accept it. But it makes an absolute sense. And, uh, sense. and there is nothing actually making sense more than it. This is, uh, this is our, our aqeedah. Uh, this is our, our aqeedah. And we believe in that. And we will die upon this. That we submit to Allah SWT. And whatever Allah SWT says makes sense to, to us. And it should be making sense to any uh, Muslim wherever they are. So Rasulullah was the one who said that. And all the evidences used by those other scholars who said this hukum has been abrogated, none of them can stand, you know, to be uh, having the strength to contradict this mention of the Prophet Sallallahu that I have said. But the hadith is intact, is in the way it is. One of these evidences they use is this uh, saying of uh, uh, the, the Sahabi, that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam rukizat lahu ala anaza, wa kaan yamuru bayna yadihi al kalb wal hima. And the, the, you have dog and donkeys; they are passing in front of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not stop his prayer, and nobody is stopping stopping them. So the scholars said, actually, there is no contradiction between this one and the other one I have mentioned. The way to combine between them is to say that. They put the sutra, right? The anaza. The dogs are not. Nobody says they are crossing between Rasulullah Sallam and the sutra. They are crossing beyond the sutra. And if there is a sutra, everyone can pass in front of the sutra, not between the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the sutra, not between the Imam and the sutra, not between the Musalli and, and the sutra. You get it? So here, why is the Rawi saying, Rukizat lahu anazatuhu? They put for him the, the anaza. Why is he saying this? He's saying this because he wants you to understand that those dogs and, and, uh, and the himar, they are not walking in front of the Prophet wasallam. They are walking beyond the sutra. And still this is bayna day Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam. You get it? Because bayna day means in front. 
get it in front from whatever direction, close, far, it doesn't matter. But Bainede, he means in front of this uh, uh, person who is standing. You get it. So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he prayed, and the dogs and the himar, when they were crossing, they crossed beyond the sutra, not between him and, and the sutra. And they also have some evidences that says that Aisha radiallahu anha said, she said, I was uh, with the Prophet sallallahu and he prayed. And I was between the Prophet sallallahu and the Qibla, lying down. Get it? And the Prophet sallallahu prayed. Whenever he wants to make sujood, he will touch my, my feet. I will give him space. And then he will make sujood. Uh, so they said this shows that uh, a woman, when she passes in front of the musalli, the prayer is not invalidated. But then those scholars who believe in that, Hadith, well, everyone believe in the hadith actually, those uh, the one who says uh, uh, it is abrogated or not, they all believe, but they just believe that that is something which exempted this one, something which exempted that one. Some of them said the only one that remains is the dog, some of them said dog and himar, some of them said this and that. But that hadith of Aisha actually doesn't contradict the first hadith we had mentioned because she did not say she she is passing. Rasulullah said, Ida marra. When something cross, walk in front of the musalli. Nobody's saying that if the thing is lying down or sleeping and you pray in front of a woman, then your prayer is, is gone. They say when it uh, when the woman cross in front of uh, the musalli. You know? So, Allahu alam, you know, uh, but I believe that the best opinion is this, and a person should be very careful with his, with his prayer. This is your religion. Uh, taking leniency in the consistency of the scholars, you know, shouldn't be applicable on matters of uh, seriousness. You know, everything in Islam is serious, but they say there are things that are more serious than that. It's wajibat, especially when it comes to the prayer, prayer is more serious than any other thing apart from this. So when you pray, you must make sure that you place your prayer in the place where there is no doubt at all. And um, do it according to the way you have learned from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and according to the way you are sure that yes, inshallah, your prayer is is valid and accepted al-ahad. So I just decided to talk about this so that nobody will come and say, ah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi was praying and the dogs and uh, uh, what do you call, and the, the donkeys are crossing in front of him and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi did not repeat his prayer. No, don't forget in the first part of the hadith, they put the sutra for him. The dogs are crossing beyond uh, the, the sutra. And it doesn't make uh, sense also for a person to believe that the dogs are coming just uh, next to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because dogs, strange dogs, don't do that usually. You get it? Unless if they are with the owner. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa doesn't have dog. Because keeping dog at home is impermissible. If somebody does it every single day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take all of his reward like the amount of the amount of Ahud. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said that. And he is the first person who applies this. He doesn't have dog. So if the Prophet Sallallahu doesn't have dog, nobody can think that a dog just coming out of nowhere and coming to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and pass in front in front of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Except if this shaitan, if this dog is from the shaitan who came to disturb the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, like they do also from time to time. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said there was a time one of them came. And it came with fire also to break my prayer, the Prophet ﷺ said. But the Prophet ﷺ uh, got him. But nobody says that dog, those dogs are uh, uh, of the same uh, nature. So we remain with the general ruling that when a dog crosses in front of the musalli, the prayer is, is invalidated unless if you have a sutra and the dog is going beyond the sutra. And the same goes to uh, himar or a matured uh, woman. So there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's an honor that we are Muslimin and following the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with no, you know, objection to that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Palawan Abi Rimma, Rifa'at at Taymi, Rifa'at at Taymi, Pala Rai to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alayhi thawbani akhdarani. Abi Rimma Rifa'ah at Taymi said, I saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and there was Wa Alaihi Thawbani Akhdaran and he was wearing two green clothes. Yeah, so that's 
also shows that the Prophet ﷺ is not always wearing white. Sometimes he wear uh, something. Uh, sometimes he wears something that is not white in in color. When Jabir and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam adakhala yawm fathi makkata wa alayhi imamatun sauda. Jabir bin Abdullah said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went inside Mecca the day the Mecca was conquered. And he was wearing uh, imamatun sauda. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has imama sauda. Imama sauda, black turbans. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was wearing a black turban. So that means it's not all the time the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is wearing, is wearing, is wearing something, something white. وفي رواية أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم خطب الناس وعليه إمامة سوداء. Another narration: the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was making khutbah to the people, and he was wearing إمامة سوداء. إمامة سوداء means black turbans. When Aisha رضي الله عنه رضي الله عنها. When Aisha رضي الله. I think I skipped one hadith. When Abi Sa When Abi Saeed Amr bin Hurayth. قال كأني أنظر إلى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعليه إمامة سوداء قد أرخى طرفيها بين كتفيه أبي سعيد عمر بن حريث said I still remember the time when I saw the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم I still remember the time when I saw رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعليه إمامة سوداء and the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was wearing Black turbans. قد أرخى طرفيها بين كتفيه. And he bring down the two side of the the two side of the 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 turbans on his on his shoulder between his shoulder. That's why Sheikh Nasir used to say that you know you see the way the Arabs, the Saudis, and the Arabs were wearing. Do the Khadij woman they were wearing that thing. The, the the what do you call the shimaq and um, that the way they were in this is how Sheikh Nasir used to translate this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he used to believe that this is ashbahu bi imamat nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam closer to them to the turbans of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam however if you look at some other narrations also you will understand that no the scholars in the past also they believe that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to wear the imamah that has the veil. Yeah, the veil means the tail that you put it uh, behind. And uh, when you go through the statements of Imam Ahmad and other scholars, you will see this. So we can conclude that sometimes he does this, and sometimes he does, he does, he does that. قال في رواية أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم خطب الناس وعليه إمامة سوداء. In another narration, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم made khutbah to the people, and he was wearing the black turbans. So I guess this is the best place, inshallah, to stop um, for the people to be able to go for uh, the Salat al-Isha. And uh, if there is any question, uh, please, uh, Adam or Abdurrahman or anyone should read those questions. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Uh, sorry, the Adhan is playing. So, Hamad, I want you to take over and ask the questions. لا بأس إن شاء الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته شيخ عليكم السلام محمد كيف الحال الحمد لله بخير شيخ so we have one question السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته يا شيخ do we know the wisdom behind the hadith of براءة being under the book of لباس which hadith of البراءة because it talks about the hadith of Barqa, Qala Qala Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam kana marbu'an, walla qad ra'aytu fi hulletin hamra, right? That hadith? Yeah, I think this one. Yeah, we don't need any explanation because the hadith is clearly talking about libas. Hulla means thawb, you know, a domain decoration. Some scholars said, these are the kind of clothes that somebody wear, which... Uh, the trouser is the same as the clothes. If he wear, if he's wearing a white shirt, the, the pants also are white, the shoes also are white. So this is hulla. Hulla means adornment. So it is, it is uh, 
uh, matching, you know, the, the title of Libas, you know. Jazakumullah khair, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum. That's the only question we had, actually. Okay. I have a question. Sheikh, Jazakumullah khair. Wa alaikum assalam. Can Adam is saying he has a question, right? Oh. oh, yes, there's one question. Regarding men not being able to wear solid red, I read that the ruling is because magicians wear all red and it is related to their rituals. Therefore, why are women allowed to wear all red but not men? Uh, uh, but men must break it with other colors. I can't remember where it came in the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, that this is Tashabbuh bil Majus. I really cannot re remember. When you are talking, I, I sense that I pass uh, an information in Girawl uh, Al Bab Al Safarini concerning this matter, but I can't recall uh, whether that is a Sunnah from the Prophet وسلم, about the cause. Because if the cause and the reason why it is prohibited, it is because we are imitating the Majus. Then uh, either we say that uh, the Majus, only the male one am amongst them are wearing it, or uh, uh, what do you call, uh, or the uh, or the hukum is, uh, I mean, the sisters are exempted from the general uh, principle. But as I said, I cannot remember, you know, where it it is mentioned in the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, that uh, this prohibition is. All is is uh, I mean there because the Majus are using uh, that kind of uh, cloth. So maybe the questioner, please, if you have something you can uh, share with with us, Barakallahu. Just the questioner is saying that uh, the red clothes it's for the magicians, Sahir, not Majin. Uh, I thought you are saying Majus. <laughs> yeah, he's he's saying Sahir, magicians. And um, so, if if there is if the if there is a sunnah from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that mentioned that this is the illah, then we go with that illah. We get it. And also, we ask the scholars why the sisters are exempted in the uh, uh, on this ruling. So either the one who is doing it are all a male among the magicians, or the hadith says uh, the male, or the scholars have some other uh, illah. But as I said, uh, I need to. Uh, verify whether that is something from the Sunnah of the Prophet or not. Mm. I don't want to base my judgment on assumption, but I'm pretty sure I passed uh, something in that uh, book, Al Albab, but I cannot recall exactly what was what was there. Jazakumullah We have a lot of um, questions. Ask until the time Adam says they make uh, iqama, then we leave, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Do we earn good deeds when we wear caps or the shimag? If you do it because Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to wear, be in the light, Allah, you earn reward for that. Yeah, if you're doing it because you want to look like Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you are, uh, uh, you will be rewarded. And for the white clothes, because the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said you should do, if you wear the white clothes, be in the light, Allah, you will be rewarded. Inshallah. The hadith we recently uh, we just read in today's class about the donkeys and the donkeys and the dogs. Does the hadith include black dog specifically or any dog? No, we said black dog. That's why the companion said, "Why only black dog?" He says because the black dog is shaitan. Yeah, so it's only black dog, and black dog means extremely black, which doesn't have any other color attached to it. You know. Assalamu Sheikh. Could we explain the Sahih Muslim 2037 about the person who invited the Prophet for soup? Can we visit our friends with our wives and eat together and vice versa? I will advise a person to stay away from this. Yeah, and he, uh, let the sisters eat alone and let the brothers eat alone. Uh, the Nusus collectively you know, shows that this is better for all of us. You know, uh, if there is something long table that they sit and they eat and they enjoy uh, the, the, the themselves, you know, which is 
so distant, you know, the sisters stay in, in another place, you can understand that. But it is my personal advice, advice looking for the source that uh, that total separation should be should be there. You know, sisters should eat alone, and the brothers will eat will eat alone. What Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, does might not be applicable for us. And yeah, Allah Mustaq. Yeah, my advice, please, be family, yeah, people who open this door and they regret. Yeah, I would never advise somebody to go with this. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is different from us in this in this regard. The feeling and the consciousness of the people when they are with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi is different from when they are they are with us. So preserve your family uh, when you're invited, and let the family go to the family of that person who invited you. As this is the custom in most of the the places, and you stay and eat uh, with uh, with your, I mean, with the with the with the host. You know, if the sister comes and the wife comes and serve you, that one is is fine. Inshallah, she brought the food, keep it there, and then left. That one is fine. Inshallah. khair, Sheikh. Adam is saying it's Iqama time. Okay, so uh, I don't want to take uh, the time, you know, of. Uh, uh, the, the the people who are also uh, very serious with us in the class. So let's close this class, inshallah. I will meet you bi iznillah azza wa jalla on Thursday, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.